tutorial, I will quickly show you how to set up your um, Unity editor to prepare and build games for iOS and Android devices. So the very first thing to do is to go into File, Build Settings. It's a tab that I actually placed here in my editor. And of course, select the iOS platform, leave all the options as they are and switch platform. It will take a little bit to Unity to process all the necessary stuff to get the editor ready for iOS. Okay, cool. <clears throat> the editor is ready. So you have to, actually I have some presets here. You may select the iPhone 10, 10s portrait or landscape whatever your game is about okay so you can see everything here but one another cool thing is the simulator in the unity 2021 version okay where you can select the iPhones and iPad iPod touch models but also Samsung devices you know when it comes to Android so let's stay Let's select iPhone 11, okay? So you can see what you build in your scene here. For instance, let's say that I will uh, create that I will add, create a 3D object here, a cube, okay? Here it is. So you can see the cube in your scene and you can have a preview of your game as it will look on your mobile device in this case Apple iPhone 11 you can switch to iPad too and you can see how great it is so let's go to the project settings uh, tab and let's start with editing the quality uh, section in order to not have too much memory consumption in your uh, mobile game, the best choice is to select the preset medium quality, okay? For iOS and Android, as you can see, there is a green check on both versions here, because that's actually the best one. Uh, another few more settings, texture quality, let's select half res, which stands as half resolution shadows disable shadows if you can that will increase the performances of your game you know on iOS but mostly on Android devices because iOS is more powerful you know the CPU is much actually better than many Android devices so anyway if you can really disable shadows in your game, especially if you're building a 2D game, but even if you're building a 3D game, you know, you may disable shadows. Otherwise, uh, you may select the hard shadows only. In this case, I will disable shadows. The shadow proje projection is a close fit, okay? You can leave also the default settings as they are. Two bones and skin weights, you know, that's fine. And that's okay, these settings will apply to both iOS and Android platforms. Let's go to the player section where you have to um, type your company or individual name. In my case, it's Access Coder, okay? Product name, you know, the, the name of your game and version, usually it's 1.0 if this is your first version. Then you can select the icons here, you know, based on the texture 2D that you will upload in your um, assets folder but this is a topic that I'm not co gonna cover he here right now I want to go to the other settings tab so here you have to override the default bundle identifier you know usually something like com your name or company name dot uh, game name okay the version is 1.0, the build is 1, and the signing team ID is the uh, team ID that you can actually get on your um, account 
page in the Apple developer site, you know, account membership, as the tooltip says here, you know. This is important in order to uh, build and sign automatically your game into Xcode and be ready to publish it uh, in the App Store. Automatically sign in, that's great, okay. <clears throat> of course, you will have to have a paid um, iOS development uh, program. Then scripted backend is IL2CCP. This is important and it's already, it's not editable here, which is fine actually. Uh, it's always good to target the device for both iPhone and iPad, you know, unless you really are making a game for iPad only or iPhone only. Okay, so this is the universal settings. Device SDK, no simulator. Do not use the simulator because it fails. So it's always great to test app and games on a real device. Just plug it into the USB port of your computer and test your apps and games directly on your real device. The target minimum iOS version I always choose uh, so far right now is 11, so I can cover a lot of devices, even older devices in the market, yeah, you know. So uh, that's pretty much it. You can leave all the other settings as they are, you know, which are pretty fine for that. Then never forget to drag your scenes into the scenes in build uh, window, you know. Otherwise, you will you will still be able to build or build and run your game, but it will not work because Unity will not recognize the scenes that it has to show in your game. Okay. So you're done with the iOS settings. Okay, your game is ready to be you know developed here, tested, and with the build option, you can build the Xcode project. Let's switch to the Android platform now. Before clicking the switch platform button, I suggest you to leave uh, texture compression do not override, which is fine. The ETC2 fallback, I usually uh, choose the 32-bit half resolution, you know, with, because it will increase your performance on uh, Android mobile devices. Then select, of course, the build app bundle Google Play, which is required now uh, in the Google Play Store, you know, when you upload your signed APK, they must be in the .abb uh, form, okay, so app bundles, no APK anymore. Create the symbols.zip public, yeah, so it will create uh, an additional zip file with all the symbols, you know, that you will upload in your Google Play. Uh, store page. Run device. If you have a device connected to your um, um, USB port of your computer, you know, you can also directly build and run your game and test it right away. So right now I plugged my Samsung device. If I click on refresh, I see it. Okay. As I said before, for the iOS, it's also good to test your um, games and apps on a real Android device that will say the truth, the simulator or the Android emulator do not work well, really do not use it, okay? Compression method, it's fine, LZ4. So now we're ready to switch platform. It will take a while as it did for the iOS platform, you know, for Unity to create or the uh, default assets and get ready with um, your platform, your selected platform, okay? Actually, if there are no objects, no so many sh scenes and stuff like that, it actually takes a few seconds as you could see here in this video, okay? Here, in the simulator, you can select, maybe you have already one of those phones, so you can select the one you like the most or even, you know, the one you own so you can directly see how your game looks and behaves in the editor before testing it on your real device. So let's go again to the project settings uh, window. Uh, we already set the quality, which applies for both iOS and Android. So the only thing to do is to um, do some additional quick settings in the player window, okay? 
So Android tab. Light map encoding, let's keep low quality as suggested because it's great. Override the default package name like we did before. Com dot your name dot game name. Version 1.0 and bundle version code 1. I usually set the minimum API level as 6 nowadays, okay? Because, mm, you know, I don't trust 5 or 4.4 kick uh, devices, you know, and actually not so many users have those devices nowadays, okay? So the 6 Marshmallow, you know, API level 23 is good. Target API level, um, I would suggest you to right now choose the highest one manually not leaving this option okay but for now i use to um, select the android 11 api level 30 okay because it's the latest one latest stable one i will still be waiting for the api level 31 so that's fine it will cover a lot of devices here in this range still so another thing the scripting backend as we did for the iOS. It's good to select the IL2 CPP in this case too, okay? And target architectures. It's good to select the ARM64 too, not just ARM V7, okay? Then you're pretty much done unless this one go to the uh, publish settings and we have to create the key store, okay? which will uh, be uh, which will allow us to sign the uh, bundle file and the apk file also for development and test before publishing your app to the app to the play store and so we have to select like key store manager key store create new anywhere i usually select in a dedicated location and i place it either in the folder of my uh, Key store. Let's name it sorry, Key Store. Or on the desktop, you know. So, very first thing to do is to set a password and confirm it. Alias name. Usually, it's Key Zero, lowercase written like you see here. Again, the password. Valid years, fifty years. I think it's pretty fun. Organization, it's your uh, individual or um, brand name, you know. Uh, you can also leave these uh, fields empty or fill them with your name, organization, unit, you know, state or, or province and stuff like that. But actually, I usually uh, only set the organization name. Add key. Click yes, and this will save a key store file in your desktop or the selected location. Okay, so you're fine with the custom key store. The path is desktop key store dot key store file, which is fine. Last thing to do is to enable this split application binary. Why? As the tooltip says, you know, split application binary uh, creates the uh, OBB expansion file or uh, which is something deprecated right now. So it's important that it creates the dynamic delivery a setback for bundle publishing format, the AAB. Okay, that will reduce the size of your APK and will allow you to publish your game on the Google Play Store, you know, without any issue. And that's it, that's pretty much it. So you can go to the build settings again. And if you have your uh, device connected with a USB cable and your computer, you can hit build and run and it will create the symbols.zip file, the bundle app file ready to be uploaded to the Google Play Store and it will also run the game directly on your device, okay? Okay, that was it actually. You're ready to go and hope you enjoyed the, this tutorial and see you next time. Yeah.